in uh, Laplace transforms. So what we have done till now is we have understood what is Laplace transform and then we have seen some properties of uh, how to find Laplace transform or some elementary functions. We have seen properties of Laplace transforms which are very important like if I want to find Laplace transform of e power at into ft, I just need to find Laplace transform of ft and do some minor modifications, replace s by s minus a. Similarly, if I want to find Laplace transform of t into ft, I know you just need to find Laplace transform of ft and then differentiate with respect to s and change this sign. If I want to find Laplace transform of ft by t, then I just find Laplace transform of ft integrated from s to infinity. This integration is where you are bugbear, where you might find it a bit uncomfortable or challenging, but you have to go through that if you want to solve problems from Laplace transforms. Today, I want to, in this class, I want to talk about inverse Laplace transform. That means, you see, Ft, I told you, you must think of Laplace transform as a transformation. That means if you give me Ft, L of Ft will give me another function F of S. Now, inverse of Laplace transform is, if you give me capital F of S, I will give you back Ft. That's the inverse Laplace transform. So, L inverse of capital Fs is small Ft. So, this is basically same as Laplace transform. Ft will give me capital Fs. Capital Fs, inverse of capital F, inverse Laplace of capital Fs will give me small Ft. Just that. That is called inverse Laplace transform. Now, very often we will be given fs and asked to find ft. Till now what we have done, given ft, how to find fs is what we struggled hard. Now given fs, how to find ft is our main concern. Of course, we won't give you very horrible fs. There are some very exam specific functions which, which are the only ones we give. In this course, of course, we act as if they exist. We are not going to prove when do they exist, when do they not exist and things like that. Whatever functions come in the exam, for all of them, inverse Laplace transform exists. Important thing is, inverse Laplace transform is also a linear transformation, which means by now you must be familiar. L inverse of A F plus B G is Laplace A Laplace inverse of F B Laplace inverse of G. Actually, it would have been nice if I had written capital F all over here, but that doesn't matter. And so similarly, we have table of inverse Laplace transform. That means previously I knew if you give me function 1, it's Laplace transform is 1 by s. Now if I give you 1 by s, it's inverse Laplace is 1. If I give you 1 by s minus a, inverse Laplace is e power at. If I give you a by s square plus a square, inverse Laplace is sin at. If I give you this, this is the inverse Laplace transform of that. Similarly, if I give you this function of s, inverse Laplace is this. Similarly for this and this. So inverse Laplace of s by s square minus a square is cos of hyperbolic a t. Inverse Laplace of n factorial by s to the power of n plus 1 is t power n. Normally this will be used. Anyway, I'll show you how it is used. Well, let's see some problems. Uh, note that all these functions for which I'm trying to find Laplace, they are all what is known as uh, rational functions in s. That means s, uh, not even generally general rational function, just up to degree 2. That means uh, you see 1 by s or 1 by s minus a or a by s square plus a square or s by s square plus a square or a by s square minus a square, s by s square minus a square or n factorial by s to the power of n plus 1. You don't have horrible functions like you know sin s. What are the inverse Laplace of sin s? We will not ask you that. Only inverse Laplace of these functions and their combinations are what are important for this course. Of course, very general questions about when do they exist and all are very interesting, but it's not part of engineering course. So we will be bothered about Laplace transform of rational algebraic functions. So we'll learn some techniques how to do this. So it means quotients of polynomials. That's what I just told you. So we exploit what is known as partial fractions to find inverse Laplace transform. If you have seen partial fractions before, well and good. It will be easy for you. If you are not seen, I will try to explain in this course, in this lecture. So let us see. Find inverse Laplace transform of something like this. 3s cube minus 5s square minus 2 divided by s power 4. Its inverse Laplace transform is what I want. So how do I do this? So I will break it up into 
parts, three parts. 3s cube by s power 4 minus 5s square by s power 4 minus 2 by s power 4. So if I evaluate that, 3s cube by s power 4 is nothing but 3 by s. 5s square by s power 4 is nothing but 5 by s square. 2 by s power 4, I write as it is. So now I want to find Laplace and sum of this. Laplace and sum of this, sorry, not Laplace, inverse Laplace. I want to find inverse Laplace of this means, I have to find inverse Laplace of this, which means inverse Laplace of this minus inverse Laplace of this minus inverse Laplace of this. How do I find inverse Laplace of this? So L inverse of this, this, this. So I'll, by linearity, I get this. Now I pull out the constants. Laplace inverse of inverse Laplace of 3 by S is if I pull out 3, 3 inverse Laplace of 1 by S, 5 inverse Laplace of 1 by S square, 2 inverse Laplace of 1 by S power 4. But that I know inverse Laplace of 1 by S is nothing but 1. So 3 into 1. This inverse Laplace of 1 by S square is T. So 5 into T. Inverse Laplace of 1 by S power 4 is T cube by 3 factorial. So these become easy. So 2 T cube by 3 factorial. So this is the inverse Laplace of such a function. So basically given a function like this, if you can break it up into different functions for which for each of them you can find Laplace transform very well you are safe that's all we have done here but life won't be that simple you will be asked more complicated questions for example I want to find inverse Laplace transform of such a function 1 by s square minus 3s minus 4 so it's not straightforward I can't write it as sum of something for which I know inverse plus. So what do I do? You need to write it as a partial fraction. What does that mean? I'll explain. For that, we need to factorize the denominator. That's easy. You know this. A square minus 3s minus 4 is s minus 4 into s plus 1. This you know. You have to basically find two numbers whose product is minus 4 and sum is minus 3. So that is minus 4 and minus plus 1. So I'll write a square, I'll write a square minus 3s minus 4 and s minus 4 into s plus 1. So now 1 by s square minus 3s minus 4 is nothing but 1 by s minus 4 into s plus 1. That 1 by s minus 4 into s plus 1, I'll write it as a by s minus 4 plus b by s plus 1. Because in each factor, I'll write it, I'll write this as sum of reciprocals of each factors but with the coefficient. I don't know that coefficient. I want to find that. That is the method of partial fractions. So I'm trying to find a by a and b where a by s minus 4 plus b by s plus 1 will turn out to be equal to this function. How do I do that? The standard things. Just multiply this whole. This is an identity. Means I want to find a and b such that this equation is always true. So you just multiply by s square minus 3s minus 4, this whole equation. So then I'll get left hand side, I'll get 1. Because I'm multiplying by s square minus 3s minus 4, they'll get cancelled, I'll get 1. Here, a by s minus 4 into s square minus 3s minus 4. S square minus 3s minus 4 means s minus 4 into s plus 1. So s minus 4 will get cancelled, I'll get only s plus 1. So a into s plus 1. Here, b into s minus 4, because s plus 1, s plus 1 will get cancelled. So s minus 4. So this, this identity is equivalent to this identity, which is this 1 is equal to a into s plus 1 plus b into s minus 4. So I want to find a and b such that this is true always. How do I find that? Easy. This is true always means for all values of s. So for example, if I put s equal to 4, this will become 0. s minus 4 will become 0. So that means this coefficient of b will vanish. s equal to 4, I'll put this is 4 plus 1 is 5, 5a five equal to 1, so a is equal to 1 by 5. So I found a, now I want to find b, put so that this becomes 0, so put s equal to minus 1, then I'll get 1 is equal to, this is 0 and this is minus 1 minus 4 minus 5, b into minus 5 minus 5b, five so b is equal to minus 1 by 5, this is what I have shown here. So to find that, I'll put first, this is what I told you, this I already got, 1 is equal to 1 into, uh, sorry, 1 is equal to a into s plus 1 plus b into s minus 4. In this, 
first make this first term vanish. So put s equal to minus 1, you will get the following b equal to minus 1 by 5. You put s equal to 4, this term will vanish and you will get a is equal to 1 by 5. But then I found a and b, so I know 1 by s square minus 3s minus 4 is a by s minus 4, which is 1 by 5 into 1 by s minus 4, minus b plus b by s plus 1, so which is minus 1 by 5 into 1 by s plus 1, because b is minus 1 by 5. Now, what, what is the advantage of this? This is easy, because Laplace inverse of this is Laplace inverse of this, but then I can pull out 1 by 5 and minus 1 by 5 out by linearity of inverse Laplace. So this is nothing but, see, not this, uh, sorry. Laplace inverse of this, I'll pull out 1 by 5. So I'll get Laplace inverse of 1 by S4 minus, I'll pull out this also, Laplace inverse of 1 by S plus 1. These I know, Laplace inverse of 1 by S minus 4 is very easy to find because it's equal or faulty. It's part of my uh, Laplace, inverse Laplace transform table. Because Laplace transform of e power 40 is 1 by s minus 4. Inverse Laplace of 1 by s minus 4 is e power 40. So I know inverse Laplace of this and I know inverse Laplace of this. So I found this. So this is Laplace of this, which, of course, I have to ask the other way. Uh, inverse Laplace of this is this. I hope it is clear. What we have basically made use of the fact that, you know, in the, my inverse Laplace transform table, one minute, let me go there. In the inverse Laplace transform table, if I have one by S minus A, I know how to find Laplace transform, inverse Laplace transform. Of course, even if this is there, I know how to do it, but uh, in the given problem, it is more complicated. Like, you know, it's not uh, easy to get A by S square plus S square, but it's easy to get one by S minus A for some A. That is what I have done here. So for given function, I try to write it as sum of 1 by s minus a for various a. So that's what I have done. That is called partial fraction. This is a method of partial fraction. Please go through these lectures once more, at least once more. Well, for one go, nobody understands these things. So go through carefully. Inverse, so I want to find next type of problem. I want to find inverse Laplace transform of 3s by s square plus 2s minus 8. How do I do this? Again, partial fraction. That's the standard trick in your exam. Inverse Laplace transform means there is either convolution or partial fraction. So first try partial. Convolution is easy. I'll do it later. Partial fraction is actually more difficult. So you try, you know, more difficult because you may not have, you may not be used to this before. I want to write it as sum of two functions where each function I know it's Laplace inverse, inverse Laplace. That is what the idea is. So we need to factorize the denominator. That's very easy. S squared plus 2s minus 8 is s plus 4 into s minus 2. You know this kind of factorization. You want two numbers whose product is minus 8 and sum is plus 2. So 4 and minus 2. So you get s plus 4 into s minus 2. Uh, so then I'll write it as a partial fractions. That means I'll write this 3s by s square plus 2s minus 8 as a by s plus 4 plus b by s minus 2. If I find a and b, then Laplace inverse of this is Laplace inverse of this plus Laplace inverse of this. But a and b being constants, I can pull out. Then I'll have inverse Laplace of 1 by s plus 4 and inverse Laplace of 1 by s minus 2, both of which I know because it's of the form s by 1 by s minus 8. So, <clears throat> uh, so now basically our aim is to find A and B. Remember, instead of inverse Laplace, we are struggling hard for writing partial fractions of a given function. So 3s by s squared plus 2s minus 8 is A by s plus 4 plus B by s minus 2. I'm trying to find A and B. Usual trick, clearing the denominators, we get this. 3s is equal to A into s minus 2 plus B into s plus 4. Now you put s equal to 2 you will get something to be as b equal to 1 and if you put s equal to minus 4 you will get a equal to 2. If you put s equal to 2 in this if you put s equal to 2 this will vanish. So this will become 6 and this will also become 6 so b is equal to 1. If you put s equal to minus 4 then this will become second term will become 0 and if you put minus 4 this is minus 6 and this is minus 12. So minus 12 by minus 6 is 2. So A is equal to 2. 
correct so then i can write 3s by s square plus 2s minus 8 as a by s plus 4 a is 2 2 by s plus 4 plus b by s minus 2 b is 1 so 1 by s minus 2 why did i do this inverse laplace is very easy now inverse laplace of this function is inverse laplace of this plus inverse laplace of this inverse laplace of this is easy to find i will just pull out 2 and i have to here there is nothing to pull out so this is i pull out 2 i will get 1 by s plus 4 whose inverse laplace is nothing but e power minus 40 here inverse laplace is e power 2t directly so this is the answer so basically all our work has gone into breaking it up breaking up the given function into partial fractions so that is a very important technique life could get more and more complicated uh, so if i give you a function like this i don't know it's not very easy but this is popular with examiners so either you remember or i'll tell you some hints how to work out see denominator is a cubic here now how do i write factorization of a cubic is not easy at all it's not at all easy it's a pretty difficult problem so what i do is i normally in your exam the, uh, the cubic will have one of the usual uh, easy numbers as a root it could be one or two or three or minus one or minus two or minus three it means s equal to one will be a root of denominator see basically i'm trying to factorize this uh, i need to write this as a partial fraction for that i need to factorize the denominator so here in this particular case you see here it is if i put s equal to one in this you know observe such things there's no alternative if you put s equal to one i get one cube minus six plus eleven minus six which is zero one plus eleven is twelve minus six minus six is minus twelve so it becomes zero so one is a root of this which means s minus one will divide this if you don't have remainder theorem, you will be in trouble. But I don't have time energy to do those things now. So, if 1 is the root of this, you should divide this by s minus 1. It will divide, it will be divisible. Then find a quadratic because this is too big. If you divide by s minus 1, I will get a quadratic. Quadratic, you know how to factorize. Or, if you are smarter, you can observe that if you put s equal to 2, also this becomes 0 because 2 cube is 8. 2 square is 4, 4 into 6 is 24. So uh, this is what 8 minus 24 is minus 16. So keep that minus 16. If you put s equal to 2, it is 22. 22 minus 6 will be plus 16. Minus 16 plus 16 becomes 0. So s equal to 2 is also a root. That gives us a lot of confidence. Put s equal to 3. So 3 cube minus 6, 3 square plus 11, 3, minus 6 will also turn out to be 0. So in this particular case, 1, 2, 3 are roots of this polynomial, cube looking polynomial, denominator. S cube minus 6x square plus 11s minus 6. If you don't know this, you have to observe that 1 is a root and divide this by s minus 1, you will get then s minus 2 into s minus 3, whatever that polynomial is. So that you factorize and you will get, I mean, it's already in factorized form. You will, if you divide this by s minus 1, you will get the polynomial which looks like s square minus 5s plus 6. That you know how to factorize. You will get s minus 2 into s minus 3. So this is, uh, that's what I written here. It, it is noted that 1 is the root of the denominator. Carry out long division to get the other factor. The other factor will be a quadratic here and I factorize that also here. So outcome of all this is two given function 2s square minus 6s plus 5 by s cube minus 6x square plus 11s minus 6 is nothing but 2s square minus 6s plus 5 divided by s minus 1 into s minus 2 into s minus 3. So this I will write it as a by s minus 1 plus b by s minus 2 plus c by s minus 3. That is because difference in the degree is just 1 here. So a by s minus 1 plus b by s minus 2 plus c by s minus 3. This, if I clear it, the denominator, I'll, to the le right, left hand side, I'll get 2s square minus 6s plus 5. Right hand side, I'll get a into s minus 2 into s minus 3. b into s minus 1 into s minus 3. 
plus C into S minus 1 into S minus 2. Now you choose values of S nicely. You choose S equal to 1, these two terms will vanish. I'll get only A term, which is equal to half. If you choose S equal to 2, then the first and the last term will vanish because S minus 2 and S minus 2 are there. So here I'll get B value to be equal to minus 1. If you put S equal to 3, first two terms vanish, and then because S minus 3 is there and S minus 3 is there, so these two will go. And this will remain, so 3 minus 1 into 3 minus 2 into C is equal to, if you put C uh, S equal to 3 in this, you'll get some horrible number. So C is equal to 5 by 2. Please check that I have done it correctly. So then finally I get this. This expression is equal to A into 1 by S plus 1. That means 1 by 2 into S plus 1 minus similarly 1 by S minus 2 plus 5 by 2 into 1 by S, 1 by S minus 3. Now Laplace inverse of this is Laplace inverse of this. So each three term you can find inverse Laplace. Each of them I know how to find because it's S minus A, S minus B, S minus C. So this is a standard thing. I will not explain this part now. You have seen sufficiently many examples like this. Stay at the screen, you will get the answer. Similarly, there are more complicated partial fractions. I don't know whether they'll really give it in the exam, but I have it's part of your syllabus, so I have written it here. I will quickly go through these things. S square plus 2s minus 4 divided by s square plus 9 into s minus 5. So this partial fraction, I have to write it as here you see the difference is 1, but there is a Mm, I, this term is not a linear term, it's a quadratic. So you write it as a by s minus 5 plus you can't write as b by s square plus 9 because this is quadratic and this is also quadratic. Then I have to make difference as 1. So numerator, I'll write it as a uh, linear equation which is bs plus c divided by s square plus 9. If the denominator is not a linear equation, then I have to use these kind of tricks. So now same story, you clear the denominator and you will get this. Choose appropriate values of S to get A, B and C. I have written here all those things, put S equal to 5, you will get this. How did I know S equal to 5? Because of this term. And equating the coefficients of S square, one gets B equal to 3 by 3, means coefficient of S square from this is, I will get S square by B S square plus A S square. So A plus B must be equal to 1. Since A is 31 by 34, B must be 33 by 34. Then I get C term equal to minus 83 by 34. That's easy. The constant term here is check A into 9 plus C into minus 5 equal to minus 4. Since I know A, I can find C. So these are standard kind of tricks in partial fractions. So this horrible looking function is this horrible looking function. This horrible looking function has inverse Laplace easy to find because I have only this horrible because these coefficients are, don't look very pretty. They are not very nice 31 by 34, 83 by 834. All these are bad, but doesn't matter to me because they are constants. I can pull it out. I am interested in only what is inside here. They, what is inside there? Their inverse Laplace, if I can find, I am in a safe, good situation, which I can do because I know inverse Laplace of s by s square plus 9, I know inverse of plus of 1 by s square plus 9, I know inverse of plus of 1 by s plus 5, which I have written here. So, I have found inverse of plus of this bad looking function. That's okay. Essentially, one needs to know well on how to break rational algebraic expressions into partial fractions. That is the upshot of this uh, lecture. Uh, I think I'll stop here now. Uh, again, we will continue.